Welcome back to Fast Market, everyone. Kevin Hinks and Joe Mazzola leading into our cash tag segment. Now I want to bring in the vice president of research for likefolio.com, Ms. Meg Megan Brantley, to the show. Megan, you've got data actually on all three of our names today, so why don't we go in order like the show? Let's talk about AB InBev, then Wingstop, then DraftKings. What do you got for us, Megan? So one of the metrics that we like to watch whenever we're watching for AB InBev especially is that consumer sentiment level. I think this is really where investors are looking. This is where consumers are looking to just to understand, you know, has the company gotten its feet back under it after a lot of the politicized drama and a lot of the boycott action that we were seeing that was really impacting Bud Light sales? And when we look at this, you can see that sentiment line. Um, it's starting to creep back up, but it's still about 11 points below where it was um, a year ago. And whenever we look at specifically that Bud Light brand versus other alternatives and other publicly traded names, so for example, a Coors, um, example, the Modelo, we still see Bud Light seriously trailing by as, as much as 15 points. So I think that, you know, the the stock seems to have recovered, but we don't quite see sentiment levels recovering to that degree. Obviously, Bud Light or um, AB and Bev is an enormous company with many more brands other than just Bud Light, but that tends to be where our data leans in really heavily. I have a question uh, kind of regarding that, that, that Bud Light, being the stalwart that it is, right? It's, it's it as you said, the, the company's made back up some ground in terms of market cap, but when you're looking at uh, when you're when you're looking at the, the consumer, has the consumer started to kind of pull back on some of that you know on some of that political angst? Um, do you think that uh, the the addition of uh, the Trump tweet the other day and then the, this commercial over the weekend? Do you think that that'll help? You know, we did see some traction whenever that Trump tweet came through. We saw a jump up in just overall mention volume, and we did see a little bit of a bump up in those overall sentiment levels, but still not normalized. So we still think that there's room for improvement. I'm not quite sure consumers are sold yet, but it's certainly a step in the right direction for Bud. But unfortunately, it seems like the stock is already, you know, capitalized on a lot of this. So for us, we want to see, you know, this continued normalization for this company at large. And then also just for fear in general, you know, overall, I think that's an industry that there's been a little bit of a pullback in just mm -hmm. beer consumption or that growth at least. And so there could be some larger scale headwinds facing the company. Megan, this is not the first time you've had to deal with something like this watching yeah. data, right? Um, good companies make mistakes. They make misfires, right? And you, you know, you've seen it. You saw it with Chipotle. You saw it with uh, Taco Bell. You saw it with uh, all these companies. You know, you see it with the airlines all the time. You saw it with Southwest, right, a year ago. Companies make mistakes, but the Americans are very forgiving. And eventually, over time, the angst or the negative feelings dissipate, right? So. Uh, is that what you're looking for here? Is your, that you're looking for that pendulum to swing back in a slow recovery, a recovery both in name and and uh, reputation as well as the price of the stock? Yeah, absolutely. And you know we are seeing signs of that. If you look at that sentiment line, you are seeing signs of recovery from lows where we were last spring. So I think that that's positive for AB InBev. You know the company is gaining traction. There's just still room to grow, at least on our front. Whenever we look at this name, we see some additional room for improvement. We want to see that line continuing to rise upward. Meg, well, one last thing: the DraftKings uh, uh, data that you brought us. Yeah. That looks really strong in yep. a in a in a a sector of the economy that seems like a lot of competition seems like gaining uh, viewers or members is very costly. But this data out of like folio looks really strong, Megan. Yeah, we think this is a name that's really heating up, and especially this weekend. You know, we're watching for a lot of activity here and adoption. Whenever we look at mentions, they're up by about six percent year over year and nearing all time highs in our data. And whenever we look at DraftKings versus competitors, um, mostly we look at this versus FanDuel, we do see that DraftKings has kind of a, 
a bit of an edge, at least in overall consumer mind share. So, so far, consumers seem to like the setup, the usability, um, and the platform that DraftKings has. And so we're definitely watching for continued adoption, especially as sports betting expands and legalizes to more and more consumers. I think that the um, overall purse for Super Bowl betting is projected to be upwards of a billion dollars this year. So a lot um, of potential revenue at play. Yeah, and we also got Wingstop, which we're looking at. Numbers look really good there, Megan. L L like Folio Data seems to be uh, pointing higher in that too. This is a, a company that is more similar to McDonald's. Joe and I will get into that actually. First thing, I want to say goodbye to Megan Brantley. Thank you so much for coming on the show and bringing the like folio data that frankly covered all three of our names today. That's, our, that, that's really great. Thanks for coming on, Megan. Thanks, guys. Happy Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Joe, our focus for this segment is Wingstop and the like folio mm -hmm. data on Wingstop pretty strong right? This is a company more like McDonald's than a Chipotle, right? They're 98% franchises. Uh, what are your views on a company like Wingstop as we look to Super Bowl Sunday? I think there's been a, a dynamic shift in terms of consumption on, on Super Bowls now. I mean, yeah, we moved away